Hello, fellow scratchers! Have you ever seen complex life simulators and wondered how they worked? Or perhaps ever wanted to create one yourself? Well, hurrah! Because today I'm going to walk you through how to create this awesome flocking simulator in Scratch and in just one single episode. How cool is that? The life system you see here is called Boyds. Man, I dare you to count how many times I say Boyds by the end of this video. Boyds! First developed by Craig Reynolds in 1986 to simulate the flocking behaviour of birds. But it has many other potential uses, from simulating schools of fish, swarming of buzzing bees, to waves of aliens and of course, zombie hordes. <laughs> I bet you guys can come up with some amazing uses for this in your Scratch games. If you have an idea then drop it in a comment below the video, I would love to hear it. Before we start coding, let me give you a quick overview of how these boids actually work. Say hello to a boid. Hello boid! Each and every boid in our simulation follows just three basic rules. Rule 1. Separation. Each boid will try to keep at a safe distance from any other boid to avoid collisions. Rule 2. Cohesion. Yet each boid will also want to be part of a flock and will try to move towards the centre of its local group. And lastly, alignment. Each boid wants to fly in the same general direction as the other boids around it. And that's it. From these three simple rules emerge all sorts of stunning and complex group behaviours. So are you ready for this? Yes? Then guys, let's get scratching! Create with me a new project. I'll name it Boyd Simulation. And the first sprite can also be named Boyd. We'll begin by drawing the Boyd's costume. Zoom right in because we want to draw this triangle that's 32 by 10 pixels in size. I first draw a square while holding shift without an outline, and then remove one corner using the shaping tool, before rotating it so that it points to the right by holding the shift key. Now we size it to 32 by 10 pixels, before snapping it to the centre of the costume canvas. Making sure it's centred is super important so that our boid will rotate nicely in our game. The next step is to ensure the boid can move off screen. Draw a large square. It turns out mine is actually too small here, so make yours around 48 by 48 pixels to ensure this works. And then snap it to the centre. Finally, make it invisible by selecting the transparent fill colour. Excellent! We can tidy away these two cat costumes. Sorry Scratchies, maybe next time mate. Right, let's do some coding. We want a random scattering of cloned Boyd sprites. When flag clicked, we hide. This is one of those clone factories where only the clones are visible and the original sprite is hidden. Set rotation style to all around, to let the boids face in any direction. Then to create the clones, we repeat 10 and drop in a create clone of myself. This will create 10 hidden clones. It will become important later that we can identify which boid is which. So we'll make a new variable, ah, oh, squish that default my variable, and create a new variable named this boid ID, making sure it's for this sprite only. Each clone needs its own unique ID. The first boyd wants an ID of 1, so set this boyd ID to 1 before our repeat loop. After the first clone is created, we can change this boyd ID by 1 so that the next created clone will get a boyd ID of 2, and so on. Perfect. When we clone a boyd, we want to trigger some actions. When I start as a clone. We begin with a go to a random position to scatter them all around the screen. And then remember to show the clone to make it visible as we hid the original sprite. Awesome, we can now run this project and check out those 10 clones. That is working as expected. But 10 is boring. Let's up that to 50 boids. There, that's much better. Shall we get them moving? The easy way would certainly be to just use a move block. But I'm sorry we can't do this because coding boids is much easier if we use a speed x and speed y vector rather than a direction and speed. For this reason we make two new variables, speed x and speed y. 
also for this sprite only. To send each Boyd in a random direction, set speed x to a random number between minus 5, negative 5, and positive 5, and the speed y we just set exactly the same. And now to animate the movement, we'll add a forever loop right here. This means each Boyd will have its own game loop right now. So the scripts for moving this Boyd can be defined in a new custom block. Name it move. And I'm going to add two inputs, old x and old y. These are to keep track of the previous position of the Boyd. Why we need this will be made clear later on. Click to run without screen refresh. We can drop the move block into our forever loop. And as I said, pass in the current x position and the y position of this Boyd. Great, so let's code up the move script next. This may seem silly, but rather than using change x and change y, I'm going to drop in a go to xy and sum the old x input, that's going to be the current x position, remember, with the Boyd's speed x variable. Then the old y input with the Boyd's speed y variable. This should have the same effect of moving us in the desired direction. So slap that green flag and watch those boids scatter. Ah, so uh, two problems I can see. One, the boids are not facing the direction they are moving in. And two, the boids are getting stuck at the edge of the screen. Uh, let's start by getting them to wrap around to the opposite side of the screen. If x position is greater than 240, that's the right edge of the screen, then change x by negative 480, the width of the screen, to bring it back to the left side of the screen. If x position is less than negative 240, the left edge of the screen, then change x by 480 to bring it onto the right side of the screen. Then for the vertical, if y position is greater than 180, then change y by negative 360. Off the top, wraps down to the bottom. And finally, if y position is less than negative 180, then change y by 360. Off the bottom, wraps back up to the top. Excellent, let's give that a test, shall we? Well, gosh, that was a complete failure, wasn't it? And I know what must be up. I told you already in fact, but now you'll see why. The invisible box I drew around my Boyd costume is not large enough to allow the sprite to move off screen. Select the invisible box and using Alt drag it to be between 40 and probably 48 pixels in size. Yep, there, now we are talking. So the other problem to solve was to make the boys point in the direction they are travelling. That sounds easy, but you have to remember the direction is given by a vector, the two values speed x and speed y. We could use some trigonometry to calculate the angle, but I do have a sneakier option. Make a new sprite, naming it center, that's the British spelling. We want this to always be in the center of the screen, so when green flag clicked, go to an xy of zero zero. Now Scratch has a block that lets us point a sprite towards another named sprite. So if we reposition a Boyd at an xy of negative speed x and negative speed y, then we can tell Scratch to point it at the center sprite, and this then gives us the direction we were after. Awesome! Let's do it! Go back to the Boyd sprite, and under the define move block, just move the other scripts out of the way. We first position at negative speed x and speed y, so go to xy and subtract in both inputs and subtracting speed x and speed y. And finally point towards the center sprite. And there you go! It works awesomely! The downside of this trick is that we had to move the sprite to calculate the direction. This would be bad news for us, except I anticipated it and kept the old positions safe and sound by passing them into this move block. So now you know why I did it this unusual way. So do you notice that some boys are traveling much faster than others? In a flock simulation, 
temporary changes in speed are just fine, but eventually all creatures will return to their species' natural flight speed. We are going to define lots of fun settings to control these boids like flight speed, and they're going to be defined as slider variables so that we can play around with them to our heart's content. Click into the center sprite and now make the new variable top speed, making it for all sprites. In retrospect, you might like to call it target speed, as it's the speed that the Boyd wants to travel at, not really their actual top speed. Place it above the when green flag click script as a way of resetting it if we want to. Set top speed to 2.85. Click on it afterwards to set the variable. Now I'm going to switch this variable reporter to a slider with a right click, and then again to change its range. A minimum of 0 0.5 and a maximum of 5. However, we'll also need a second variable, resolve, for all sprites. This will define how quickly the animal transitions to its target speed. Make this a slider 2 with a range of 0 0.01, uh, it's tiny, to 1.0 and we'll set it initially to 0 0.2, and then click that block to set it. Cool, let's make this work. Back in the Boyd sprite, separate off the go to x y block. To know if we are travelling too fast or too slow, we first need to know what this Boyd's actual speed is. That's the distance we are travelling by moving by speed x and speed y. Make a new variable named distance for this sprite only, and set it to, and this is cool, distance to center. Yeah, we got this for free too, from our trick to point in the right direction. Make a new variable, we'll name it target for this sprite only, and we'll use this in our calculations. First we'll calculate the speed x, so set target to, if we divide the current speed x by the distance, that is the full speed, then that gives us the speed as a unit vector. That has a full speed of 1. And that means we can then multiply it back up to the top speed to give our desired target x scaled to match our top speed. So we just want to gradually accelerate towards this target speed. Change speed x by, and now we multiply resolve, this is how long it takes to get to the top speed, and we subtract from the target speed the current speed x. Yeah, we change the speed by a fraction of the difference between the current and target speeds. Haha, <laughs> this has to be repeated for the speed y. We can duplicate the set target and the set speed blocks above, changing the three speed x's for speed y's. And that's all we need to change. So reattach the scripts below before smashing that green flag. Ah, wow, yeah, all the boids are now settling into a nice constant pace. And you can have fun wiggling these sliders and seeing how a smaller resolve causes the boids to take longer to change speeds. Nice! When you're done playing and you want to reset the sliders, just click into the center sprite and tap on the set top speed block. Et voila! So thus far, it's been every Boyd for themselves, they don't appear to care much about each other and in fact they have no idea what other Boyds are flying around them. What they need is a way to see each other. To achieve this in Scratch we are going to have to begin to record our Boyd's positions and speed data in Scratch lists. This way each Boyd can then look in the list to find out what its neighbouring Boyds are up to. Boyd X for the X positions. Boyd Y for the Y positions, Boyd SX for the speed X's, and Boyd SY for the Boyd speed Y's. For the time being we'll keep the lists visible on the screen until we know they are working. Before our game kicks off we must remember to delete all the items from these lists. Delete all from Boyd X, Boyd Y, Boyd SX, and Boyd SY, and drop that right at the top of the when green flag clicked hat block. Next we must add the new items to the list, one for each Boyd clone created, 
add to Boyd X, to Boyd Y, to Boyd SX, and to Boyd SY. And we drop in the current sprites X and Y positions, and the current speed X variable, and current speed Y variable, like so. Make sure to drop this whole thing in just before the forever loop, after setting speed X and Y above it. OK, so if we run the project, you should see 50 items appear in each of the four lists, one item for each Boyd in our game. But you'll note none of these items in the lists are updating as the Boyds move. To be useful, we need to keep this data bang up to date. Come over to our define move script and down at the bottom, use a replace item of list block. The item number is going to be given by the this Boyd ID variable. Remember that one? It gives the ID of each Boyd, one being the first, and this correlates perfectly with the item number in each list. We are replacing the value in the Boyd X list with the up to date X position of this sprite. Cool. So duplicate that for the Boyd Y list, popping in the Y position of the sprite. And finally, duplicate them both, and we'll set the Boyd SX and Boyd SY. Of course, these values are again the speed X and the speed Y variables. So pummel that green flag, and the Boyd X and Y list items are spinning around to reflect each Boyd's current position. Since no Boyd is changing direction yet, you'll notice that the speed X and Y lists don't change. And that's fine. Excellent. Now that we have easy access to our Boyd data, we can do some very exciting things. Separation is the name of the game, as we want to get our Boyds to avoid getting too close to each other. Flying into another bird is never a very good idea after all. We'll need some new slider variables to configure this. Click back into the centre sprite and make a variable named range for all sprites. This is the maximum distance this Boyd can see. Any Boyd outside this circle will not directly affect this Boyd's navigational decisions. I'll set it initially to 75 pixels. Then make the variable reporter into a slider with a range from 20 to 150 maximum. A second variable named separation, again for all sprites, this one is the amount of force this Boyd will exert to keep it away from any Boyd within sight. Set separation to 0 0.2. And a good slider range for this is a minimum of 0 0.05 and a maximum of 0 0.5. Click the scripts to set the initial values and then click back into the Boyd sprite. So, the scripts that change the sprite's position are all in this define move block, but anything that changes the Boyd's direction will be defined in a new custom block, which we'll name calculate. Make sure to tick the run without screen refresh, otherwise this will run awfully slow, trust me. The new calculate block can be used in each Boyd's main game loop, just before the move block. Yeah, just like that. Now back to that new define block. Every Boyd will run this script and will want to compare its position to all the other Boyds around it. For this reason, we need a new variable, other ID, for this sprite only. This will keep track of which other Boyd we are comparing ourselves to. Start with it set to 1. Before adding a repeat loop, we repeat for the number of items in the Boyd X list. We want to look at each one in turn. We mustn't forget that this Boyd is also one of the Boyds in this list. To skip over our own Boyd data, we make sure that the other ID is not equal to this Boyd ID. Cool. Then before the loop repeats, drop in a change other ID by one to move on to the next Boyd in the list. The first thing we need to know is whether the other Boyd is within range of this Boyd. That is, they can see each other. For this, we must know the distance between these Boyds. More variables. I need more variables. Distance x. For this sprite only, 
and distance y, or this sprite only. So distance x is the difference between the two Boyd's x positions. Subtract from item of list. Use the other ID for the item number of that other Boyd. We want the Boyd x list, and we simply subtract from it this Boyd's x position. We want to do the same for the distance y. Just use the Boyd y list and subtract this Boyd's y position instead. Okay, this is good, but we need the actual distance, not just the x and y distance. For this, we will have to resort to some Pythagoras. Set the distance to the square root of the sum of distance x multiplied by distance x and distance y multiplied by distance y. <laughs> right, we got the distance. So is this Boyd within range or not? If distance is less than range, remember that that was around 75 pixels away, then good. What now though? We are trying to manoeuvre this Boyd away from the other Boyd that is getting too close. To achieve this, we just want to push directly away from them. That's just the opposite of the distance x and y variables that we just calculated. Change speed x by, and we'll need a multiply, and then a divide, so that we can divide the distance x by the full distance. That will give us a constant force away from the other Boyd in the x direction. Drop that into the multiply, and we need the same for the speed y. So duplicate that, changing the speed x to a speed y and the distance x for a distance y. But rather than just drop in our separation variable, for that is the force we want to push these boys apart with, we first need to invert it. Remember, we want the opposite direction away from the other boyd. Make a new variable. Yep, so many. Neg res for this sprite only. That stands for negative separation. Ah, I named it wrong. It should have been neg sep. <laughs> Sorry. Anyhow, at the top of the calculate script, set neg res to zero. Subtract. Yeah, separation. What a numpty. And we can drop in the neg res variable into the left side of those two multiplies to add in the separating forces. Now this I've got to see. It's time to run this project. I'm hoping to see these little babies trying to avoid each other. And would you look at that? They most certainly are. How awesome is that? If we push up the separation slider, then the boys' reaction to each other becomes stronger and they turn away faster. What's more, turn down the range, and now they swerve out of the way last minute. You can have a lot of fun just playing with these settings. But I digress, and we still have work to do. These little purple guys are not showing any sign of flocking, for they would need a desire to stay together, rather than just being repelled. The cohesion rule is that we find the centre point of all nearby boids and try to move towards it. Not so hard. We just need to add up all the distance x's and distance y's and then divide them by the number of boids to get the average distance. Then we'll need a new slider to control the applied force. So back in the centre sprite, make a new variable naming it cohesion for all sprites. I'll initially set that to 0 0.03 and after making it a slider, set its range from 0, 0.0 to 0 0.1. Now in the Boyd sprite, to get an average of the distances, we'll first need a count of how many Boyds are close by. Make a new variable, Boyd count, for this sprite only, and set it to 0 just before the repeat loop. Next up, more variables to store the summed relative positions. Sum x for this sprite only, and sum y also for this sprite only. And what do you know? Also set them both to zero in the same place. 
scroll down. This is the point where we know the other Boyd is within range. So we change Boyd count by one. Then we'll change sum x by our distance x variable. That is the position of the Boyd in the x direction relative to this one. And of course, we'll do the same thing with the sum y and the distance y variable. Great. So now we have summed up all the relative positions, we need to average them by dividing by the count of Boyd's. At the bottom of the script, oh, you know what, duplicate this change speed x and y. It follows a similar pattern, only not with any of the same variables. The divide by is going to be the count of Boyd's in this case. Hey, right now, duplicate these two scripts. We'll keep them safe. You'll thank me for that later. Back to business. The scaling slider for this effect is the cohesion variable. So pop that in, and the value that we are averaging is, of course, sum x and our sum y variable too. Woohoo! And here we go, smashing the green flag. Oh, yes, wow, this is looking dead exciting. I'm just hiding the non-slider variables, so look how the boys are now trying to bunch together, quickly turning around as they reach the edges of the flock, and that's really cool. If we pull the cohesion right up, then pow, the boys are all pulled tightly together. What's really exciting is how these behaviours are emerging. I guess what we have here is much more like a swarm though than a flock, like bees buzzing around each other. But our desired end game is slightly different. Each member of our flock should work together to bring order out of chaos and let the flock move around as a whole with uniform purpose. The final rule then is called alignment. This is where each Boyd will attempt to match its direction to the average direction of all the other Boyds in range. This is achieved the same way as the average positions, only we use the average speed x and speed y of each Boyd instead. So you know what we need then? Yep, yeah, back into the centre sprite and make a new variable alignment for all sprites. And we'll set it initially to 0 0.02. The slide will have a range from 0 0.0 to 0 0.1. Now click the script to reset all these defaults, and then we can move back into the Boyd scripts to pull off this final bit of Boyd magic. We are going to sum the Boyd speeds. So, two more variables needed. Yeah, variable overload, I know. Name the first sum speed x for this sprite only. And sum speed y. Do I need to say this sprite only? So, set them both to zero before the repeat loop. And now, just like with the sum x and sum y, we need to change sum speed x and sum speed y. It might have been quicker to bring in two new change blocks. So change sum speed x and sum speed y by, and we need the relative speed compared to the Boyd speed. So subtract from the item other id of Boyd sx and of Boyd SY, and we subtract the current Boyd speed X and speed Y. Got it? Summing the difference in speeds. Now we can scroll down and use this handy pair of change blocks I prepared earlier, popping in the alignment slider variable, and multiply by the average of the summed speed X and speed Ys. Now that is what I'm talking about. You ready for nothing? Obliterate that green flag! And are you seeing anything different? Is this random swarm mobilising and moving off in any common direction? Yes, I believe so. They definitely are now tending to move in the same direction. Perhaps if we pull the alignment slider right up… Oh man yes, now they are very uniform indeed. Really love the natural flow of these boids. Pushing the alignment low again causes them to lose their purpose and begin to swarm around once more. 
I can only just begin to imagine the different formations possible by playing with these awesome sliders. However, we do have rather a lot of them, taking up far too much space on our screen. Let's try to hide those sliders when the mouse isn't nearby. Click into the centre sprite, and we add a forever loop to the when green flag click script. But we'll wait until the mouse is almost touching the left edge of the screen, that is, until mouse x is less than negative 200. And then we show variable top speed, and show variable resolve, and show variable range, and show variable separation, and show variable alignment, and cohesion. Yep, all of them. And then what do we do to hide them again? We wait until mouse x is greater than negative 50. That's almost the middle of the screen to allow for these long sliders. Then we hide all the sliders again. Hide variable top speed, resolve, range, separation, alignment, and cohesion. Woohoo! So many! Shall we give it a try? Okay, so the variables are hidden, that's great. So move the mouse over to the left edge of the screen and up they pop. But what's cool is that they don't disappear until we move far enough away to the right. Brilliant. That means we are safe to change these sliders without them disappearing. Guys, we are almost at the end of this tutorial. But just before I go, how about we add a little script to let us interact directly with these beautiful boids with the mouse. Yeah, I like that idea too. Go back into the Boyd sprite and find the bottom of the calculate script. If the distance from this Boyd to the mouse pointer is less than range, then set distance x to the mouse x subtract this Boyd's x position. The same for the distance y. Subtract from mouse y this Boyd's y position. Then we just borrow these last two change speed x and y scripts. These are for the separation. Remember my stupid moment naming it negres instead of negsep? It says new sep in my notes too. Oh! The only thing we need to change is to replace distance with the distance to mouse pointer. And on that note, run the project one final time and bask in the glory of this clever Boyd simulation. No, these Boyds are most certainly not keen on flying near my mouse pointer now. Ha! I can actually herd them around if I wish, and that's so fun. Are there improvements to be made? Definitely. For example, I think my separation calculations should actually have divided by distance squared to push the boys away more gradually based on distance. I'll look into that soon. And to get more boys running at once, we'd need to look into screen partitioning and boy bucketing. <laughs> However, for a quick jump in speed, you can try running your projects in Turbo Warp 2. <laughs> wow! And this really is the end now. If you've enjoyed this video, then please, please smash the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. There's a link to the Scratch Studio in the description under the video, so do post a link to your finished projects there. I cannot wait to see them. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Do have a great week ahead and scratch on, guys.